Scientific breakthroughs, the unveilings, the spiritual revelations, the openings. That's fine. Mm. Hijacking the mind. What? Aluminum bonds with intelligence. Rewind the message. Merry Christmas. Oh, 13 oh, oh. indigenous immigrants. State of the unison. Addressing nothing. Foundations can ruin. Level to level. Fuck the embezzlement. Tales from the crib. Hitting blood rituals. 50 scores flying over California. Vacation. Flying dragons. Swords and daggers. Lions and tigers. Gotta get my parents or parish. To raw flesh, grandpa, vegetarian I'm a malnutrition, chemically imbalanced Ethiopian, in Helen Kush Blue projects get pushed, mold with the bush Standing on the middle line, no defining Swirling dervish, in between space and time It's a fix Tuesday, another news day North, east, west, south, west Not here to confuse the day, just diffuse the way uh, Another tip for fix Tuesday Whether you suffer from pain in your back to aches in your knees, come on down and purchase you some ancestral tea to get rid of all the parasites, toxins, and fleas. Spiritual elevation for cosmic gravitation, so put away the patience, because there's no time to be wasted.
Peace, good people out there. Radio Land, Cyberland. I want to welcome y'all back to another rousing episode of Tips and Tricks Tuesday. I am Brother Jamal, and I'm sitting in for Blackwater, the Meta Magician. Today's date is December 20th, 2016. The year is coming to a rapid conclusion. And uh, also coming to a crescendo. So those of us who are awake and aware, and if you're on here listening, then you are one of the very few awake and aware people on the planet. Congratulations. And also I give you (laughs) my sympathy because to whom much is given, much is required. So given that we are awake and aware at this given time, we know that we have uh, the proverbial cross that we have to bear. You know, in the uh, uh, hermetic text, says in the end times, the wise man will be seen as the fool, and the fool will be seen as the wise man. And without a doubt, that time is upon us. We are in that season. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. We are in the season. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in this this evening. Thank everybody who goes on to Dr. Eileen's YouTube page and listens to the broadcast there. I want to thank uh, Dr. Eileen and his queen, Kadira, for opening up their platform to allow some different voices, different perspectives to come on and vibrate with the people because ultimately they understand that we are all pushing towards one common goal. That is illumination and liberation. So I want to thank them. I want to thank uh, Blackwater, the Meta Magician, also for opening up what normally is his spot on Tuesdays, Tips and Tricks Tuesday. And I also need to thank him because we correspond during the week. Normally we talk once a week. And uh, one thing about those of us who are on this path and have gotten to a certain level, you need at times somebody who you can respect and who has also been laboring on the path, you need to bounce things off them. We can call it building. We can call it iron sharpening iron. Uh, When you went to church, they called that a revival. You need something to revive you. Although we ain't in the church, you know, we still understand what words mean. And being revived is not a church word. That's a real, that's a reality. You need to be revived at times. So when you can communicate with uh, different people, and it's so few and far in between, you can talk to people who have something on their mind beyond uh, Kanye West, blonde hair, and LeBron and them, and uh, Ezekiel Elliott, things of that nature. When you can talk about something of depth, it is something that you must hold in high regard and uh, is actually miraculous. It's miraculous that we even exist right now those of us who are on the frequency. That's a miracle in itself because it is not considered popular to really be on the frequency. And a lot of people who are acting, let me repeat that, acting, A-C-T-I-N-G, acting like they're on the frequency, 
we're starting to see the truth come out. They said it, and you get to the last day, the truth will be revealed. That's why we call it the quickening. Things will reveal themselves in rapid fashion. So I'll touch on some of that here in a minute on what I'm alluding to. But first, I want to direct your attention to Dr. Eileen L. Bay. That's Dr. and A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y dot com. Dr. Eileen L. Bay dot com. Because make no bones about it, the so-called ruling class is very aware of the power of magic. And like Dr. Alim always says, because they don't have the ability to work high magic, they always dwell in low magic. So it would behoove us who have the capabilities and the, the raw materials necessary for the highest form of illumination, it would behoove us to dig into our goodie bags and pull out some of our high magic. And one of the places that you can find different mechanisms to activate your high magic is Dr. Eileen L. Bay dot com. And that's from the ruler to the tutor. That's from your from different herbs that you can take in to help your body restore and return to homeostasis all the way up to charts to help you understand what frequency you came to the earth with that for understanding how you need to operate. All the way up to literature. He is a published author, so it's a one-stop shop. Go to Dr. Eileen want you to also not forget that every Friday, Blackwater, the Meta Magician, is hosting Wachita Semitwai at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's a eight-week session. And it's dealing with meditation, Tai Chi, Qigong, giving you a lot of good techniques to help you again combat the low magic that is being directed at us. And basically, in a nutshell, to help you activate what is inside of you. You know, when we all, when we get really into this thing and we really start getting down to the nitty gritty. You 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 come into higher consciousness as a black person, so called black person, melanated person. You come into it kinda of with a degree of anger. Because once you start becoming aware of everything that's been done, whether it's the truth that's been hidden, the atrocities that have been committed, the nature of those who would like to posture as your nemesis, it naturally creates a degree of anger. The awareness brings on some anger. So we tend to get into a mindset, and I am very guilty. And I'm going to get into that in more, uh, in more depth here in a little bit. Where you get into a us versus them mode. And sometimes what happens is we elevate them to a level that they're not even at by identifying them as being our arch enemy, our nemesis. It's a privilege for the Joker to be the arch enemy of Batman. That means that they're equal. That's a battle of the gods. But to look at the European, primarily the German, the germ seed, as 
the direct enemy is flattery for them. So it really comes down to really, really, really harnessing our own energy, going within. And I'm finding myself, I'm making a transition. I've gone through another level of initiation just here in the last month because I've had to sit and really look at myself. I had to really think and contemplate. So I'm foreshadowing right now. I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going we're gonna to come back and I'm going to explain all this, what I'm getting at. But go and check out these brothers. You can reach out to Blackwater at 12th Density Productions at yahoo.com. That's 12 T W E L F T H Density Productions at yahoo.com. So tonight, what I want to work off of for a topic, and I've kind of loosely introduced it, is the metaphysics of fitness. The metaphysics of fitness. And I want you to take what initially comes in your head when you think fitness, and I want you to mentally create a little bomb and blow that up because I want us to elicit our creative minds tonight as well as our logical minds. I want to go beyond what the normal idea of fitness is, okay, because what we will discover further along you go is that every single thing that we engage in in this physical reality is something that allows us to rediscover our origin and how to get back home. It's, it's a road map back to the beginning, back to the mother. So we consider fitness usually in a box. And that box normally cannot share space with something like occult science or metaphysics because we're thinking we're thinking meta, and if you hear some noise, the, the young lion is pulling out pots. He, he, he is about it, about it. So, you know, uh, <laughs> this is ghetto radio. Bear with us. But uh, when we think of metaphysics, we're no, you know, when we just look at the word, we're saying, okay, meta means above or beyond. Physics is the physical. It means beyond or above the physical. So you're like, well, that you, you, there's no space for us to come in here and talk about the physical because I'm all spiritual. I just want to deal with the spiritual. But we know that the truth of our reality is that spirit has no expression unless it has a human vehicle to express itself in. So we cannot negate the human body because we're in it. And if it was not important, the journey through the human body, and there would be no need, we would have not created the body to experience it because all of this is our creation. So we have to consider how the physical merges with the spiritual, which is simply what the tree of life on the front side, one of the ideas that it is touting is that you have to walk the middle path. And that the only way truly to Christ, your Christhood is through the middle path. So we cannot discount the physical aspect of our existence. With that said, I want to detour for a moment. Just want to introduce that 
what we're going to talk about, but I want to detour. But I think we need to do some house cleaning first. Let me say this. These are beautiful times, yet troubling times that we're living in. Beautiful, yet troubling. They're beautiful because so much knowledge, so many answers are available to us now if we just ask the right questions, okay? It's not about what you know. It's about what you realize you don't know. And when you realize you don't know, you then know what questions to ask. And that is what leads to knowledge. And knowledge then, under proper contemplation, leads to wisdom. And we all know that wisdom is mama, Sophia. It leads us back to where we began. We began as wisdom. And we fail through a process of wanting to know more. So we have access to all this knowledge now. Uh, We are beginning to realize our powers now. Key word, realize. Because here's the thing, we've always had powers. They've just either been dormant or we've used them blindly without consciousness of them. Again, we've always had power. We just haven't always been aware of our power. And now with all this information, which is reinformation, or we are remembering or putting back together, putting the body of Osiris back together, we are learning about things that we've done innately. We're now learning about, oh, this is how it actually works, how to harness it. It's like uh, me and Gino have been uh, corresponding about this show, Salem, on Netflix. And one of the keys is that when a new witch is discovered, there's someone who wants to help her cultivate her powers. She has all this raw power. There's this new witch, I'm in season two, named Ann Hale, and she's still learning how to cultivate her powers. She's a powerful witch. So this knowledge has now given us mechanisms to cultivate what we already got. So along with the release of all this knowledge is the downside. There's also a ton of misinformation and distractions. Misinformation and distractions. I call this the Megwa paradigm. See, I I had a professor, I've mentioned him before, a Nigerian professor, cool brother named Dr. Megwa. And Dr. Megwa said, um, this is a communication. I'm a journalism. Uh, that's my so-called education background. So I had him for a communications class. And he said, information moves thusly. It is first hoarded. Now, we can say that the hoarding of information Just for a reference point, let's call it the Piscean Age. Because, it, you know, what was the big thing in the Piscean Age? Belief. Okay? Then he says information is flooded. We call this what we have now, the Aquarian Age. Information is abundant. Sorry for that sound effects. Then after it being flooded, though, here's what comes along with that. It's both distorted and embellished. See, that's the, that's the, there's a price to pay for everything. So the price that you have to pay now for having all this access is that you got a lot of BS that's attached And you have to, like it says in the Bible, you got to separate the wheat from the tare. We got a lot of gurus. We got a lot of charlatans. 
We got snake oil salesmen, and we got a whole lot of debates. Whole lot of debates. And let me hang my hat right there on those debates. It is insane. It is insane. The whole idea of debating has been sullied. Debating used to be something that was a part of, that was came under the educational title or heading of rhetoric, where you had to master your stance on a subject, but you also had to use critical thinking to project as to what your opponent might use for an argument to counter yours. So in other words, you had to think about what do I know and what would somebody else say to counter what I know. And in the midst of that, presenting this information, you would then either prove your stance or you would be disproven. What we have now is Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus, World Wrestling Federation. When I was a kid, it was NWA. What was it? NWA? I think was the name of the before NWA the rap group. That was NWA the National Wrestling Alliance. Dusty Rhodes. Let me tell you something. Tell us about us. Dusty Rhodes. All the dudes will come out there on camera and they'd be talking about how they're going. You know, you had Rufus. Freight Train Jones, you know, uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, you know. Uh, <laughs> and they would get on camera and boast and brag about what they're going to do. I'm going to come back and I'm going to win that TV title and I'm going to tell you something, Daddy, when I come, you know, and these dudes were good. Actually, they were rapping. They were actually rapping back then. This is what these debates. Actually, these debates are even worse than that because now it's becoming volatile and something is going to happen. Something bad is going to happen soon. And what it is doing, though, and you know that there are some nefarious hands behind all of this egging certain characters on, probably lying in their pockets because what it does is it devalues the science and art of query, research, and enlightenment. That's what it does. It devalues it. That's a form of warfare. When information is hoarded, you threaten people, threaten people's lives for trying to get information. But when you flood information, you then use Passive warfare, which is very dangerous because you don't see it. And you put all these charlatans and these snake oil salesmen and these rah-rah people who probably can't read and don't read. It don't matter if they're sitting up doing these videos and got a bunch of books behind them. You can listen to them talk until they can't read. You ain't learned how to pronounce certain words yet. You you know, you, you, get, you become a better... Uh, a better articulating by reading and understanding words. You don't understand the word, you get your dictionary, pick it up, define the word, get the etymology and so forth. They can't even read. And these people posture as so-called intellectual leaders when they're nothing but rabble rousers. So they are great tools for someone to use who wants to hinder a certain group of people getting and achieving higher enlightenment. And I ain't saying you got to be around here talking like Henry Louis Gates, that chump, but you look, a scholar knows a scholar. There are a lot of people who are being introduced to this information through these charlatans who don't know that these people are nothing more than con artists. 
And then the people who are really dropping science, they get labels like, oh, that's pseudo. Or oh, that's that, you know, that's that space age, you know, out of this world, Mars crap. And it, that's a European argument. An African has never been one to dismiss something because African has always known that everything is everything. John Henry Clark said that. Everything is everything. You don't dismiss anything in the cosmos. We're cosmic people. So how can you tout your Africanism and you not, not tout your cosmic existence? It's the European who relegates knowledge to his book or knowledge to his didactic reasoning. They go and try to throw around these words that they've learned at some university because ultimately a lot of us still worship that which we say we are fighting against. So if you want to come, and I'm saying this because I know this is going to go on YouTube, if you want to get some real scholarship and you want to hear some science and get straight down to the proverbial meat and potatoes, then you need to stay tuned in to First World Order Radio, Dr. Eileen Bay, Blackwater and the Man of Magician, Brother Jamal, where we give you straight hard no scholarship. And I feel like I need to say that. Now, let's start the show. The metaphysics of fitness. I want to tell y'all a little bit of my story. And tell you some of my travails and so forth and experiences and I want to relate this in a way where you can see, like I just said, how everything is everything. Now, I've told y'all before, for the last 13, 14 years, I've been a professional trainer, personal trainer. I've trained local celebrities. I've trained uh, children, elderly. Uh, I had wild success with my programs and which is all ironic because I was a chubby chubby and bubbly growing up. So I was the last person anybody would have thought would have ended up in in, in fitness. How I got started was my Uncle John. He introduced me and my siblings to bodybuilding. He was the one who introduced us to the Flex magazines. We used to have Sean Ray in there and Robbie Robinson and, you know, uh, uh, Lou Ferrigno. Uh, and he used to work, my uncle used to work at a place called Square D. And every now and then he would take my cousin and I over to Square D and he would, they had a little gym, a little company gym. And, uh, my nickname is Boo. So he'd be like, uh, Boo son. Focus son. <laughs> oh, he was a we used to trip on how he'd be talking. Like, focus son, focus. You got to squeeze the muscle, son. You got to put your mind in the muscle. And we you know, we would we would kind of clown Uncle John and be joking, you know, in a in a in a loving way. But we didn't know that at the time he was introducing us to metaphysics because what he was actually saying was you need to cross the barrier between your mind and your body. You need to go in between. When you say something like put your mind in the muscle, that's metaphysics because we – Tend in this Western paradigm to separate things. This is the body. This is the mind. This is the heart. This is the lung. We don't see things as all integrated as one. So he was telling us that your mind can travel into the muscle. Then I get these books some 30-something years later, and they're talking about 
There's one book, The Secret of Your Sales. Get that book. I've mentioned it before. And it tells us how each cell is actually a brain. It's a whole universe in itself. An actual brain of the cell is the membrane. So when you're talking about take your mind and squeeze, and we know the muscle is comprised of cells. So literally, you are thinking through your muscle, activating the little miniature brains that are inside of the muscle and commanding them through your nervous system to activate. That's metaphysics. Now, he was the first to show us the Mr. Olympia contest. Now, I don't know if y'all for me, but Mr. Olympia is, the, is like the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. Listen to the name, Olympia, as in the Olympi, uh, Olympian gods of Greece, Zeus and his whole pantheon. Now, this show was not created, the Mr. Olympia was not created without knowledge of some occult, science, and mythology, metaphysics, all of the above. Because just like you'll find behind just about everything that you will, every walk of life, every genre you can probe into, you will find some Jews behind it. Ashkenazi, or Sephardic, we're talking about the Eastern Europe Jews who took on the, the uh, took on the personage of Jews, and there's two brothers, Joe and Ben Weeder. These are the people who really started bodybuilding, and they are the people who put Arnold Schwarzenegger on. Now, see, you've heard a lot of our scholars talk about how the whole Holocaust thing and how it was, uh, we know that Hitler was a Jew. And we know about the atrocities committed against the Jews. But what we come to find out is that it was an agreement that was made to solidify people as a chosen people so that they could match up with a Bible mythology and that they could supplant the real chosen people. And you know who they are, those real chosen people. But I digress. These two Jewish guys were behind this Olympia. So, of course, the dumb bodybuilders, just, they now don't even know. They, they just want to, you know, they're going for the, the check and, the, you know, and the endorsements. They're not knowing what they're really being involved in. And it's also a sexual aspect to that because you know the word gymnasium means a place for little young naked boys of course that's not what we use it for now but you gotta think these people are aware of all these origins he who is aware of the origin who is aware of the magic controls the ritual so back to the timeline My daddy was stationed in the Air Force in Texas. We're from North Carolina. That's how I ended up with the Texas connection. He had a set of children down here in Texas from his first marriage. Okay? One of them, his second child was my, my second to oldest brother, Gary, who transitioned in 2012, so a uh, shade for him. But Gary was was funny. Gary is actually was Bobby. He's Bobby Hemmings' age. He was born in '61 in November. So uh, so he was 16 years older than me. So he was always this giant to me. When he would come to North Carolina to visit. He's six. He was six five, and about two hundred and seventy pounds. And he he literally was the black Conan, Hercules. But what is Hercules? Hercules is also Heru. 
of course, I don't know all this at the time, but I know who Conan and who Hercules are. And this Negro was the, that he fit that archetype for me growing up. Now, what's interesting, though, you got to always, everything is divinely ordered. Everything in this world, the people we meet, we encounter, the, 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 the different triumphs we have, the different failures we have, everything is divinely ordered, even down to the name that you have. Even the government name that you were born with, even if you've changed your name, that name that you came to the planet with holds a certain frequency and can help you re- reveal your purpose. His name is Gary or was Gary. Now, interestingly, the name Gary comes from the old Norman Jerry or Gary, depending on if the G is soft or hard, it's G-E-R-I, and it means spear. Now, spear. Now, what is a spear equivalent to? It's equivalent to the Jed pillar. It's equivalent to Jacob's ladder. It's equivalent to Excalibur. It's equivalent to the cross. What was Hitler looking for? Because we know World War II was an occult war behind the scenes, he was looking for the spear of destiny. So when I go back and I reflect on all of this, I was in North Carolina. I had dropped out of, excuse me, I had dropped out of college. I had finished my four years of eligibility for football, had a four-year scholarship, played. All I did in college was smoke weed, play football, and chase women. That was what my degree was in. So left school after my eligibility was up, wasn't doing nothing back home. My brother said, why don't you come out of Texas and get you a new start? So what happened? I ended up traveling south. Now, in all mythologies, including religious texts, the hero has to go where? Either go west or he has to go south. South into Amenta, the underworld, hell. I had to come down to Texas. And if you've been down here in the summer, you have tasted somewhat of hell. But I had to come down here to recover the spear of destiny. And that's why it had to be through Gary. This is crazy. All this stuff connects. Now, Again, Gary was 6'5", about 265, 270. Gary was a good-looking brother. Women loved Gary. (laughs) Gary was a bad boy. Women loved him. Now, for me, again, he had become a god. Now, mind you, when I came to Texas, I'm 20... It was 2002. I was 25 when I came to Texas. Okay? Now, back then, I'm not studying. No occult. I don't even know what the... If you told me that word, I'd be like thinking it was some Jim Jones something. So I don't know. I have a clue what no occult is and no metaphysics. So I'm just blindly going along. I don't have a clue. But unknowingly... What I had done was I had taken his energy and I had formed an archetype out of it. He had become my version of Heru, Heru the Elder. And I had become Heru the Child. I was Heru on the horizon, on my way up. And what happened is I looked at him, and I used his energy and his guidance to transform my body and my mind. Mind you, this is all through just pure mundane physical fitness. I don't have a clue about nothing. Not knowing, though, I was actually using magic. I had created an archetype that I could identify with 
Don't panic, I always talk about. Don't tell me about all the intellectualism of Osiris. If I ask you who Osiris is, tell me that's my daddy or it's my uncle, Labib, or Uncle John. To really understand it is showing that you cannot relate it to something tangible. That's when it becomes real. So he had become that for me, and I had created a ritual around him. So by the end of 2002, that, uh, you know, I wasn't smoking. I wasn't drinking 40s. I'm working out. I'm training. You know, I'm seeing when we go out to the club, I'm seeing how the women turning their heads. I'm like, man, I got to get my swag back. And not that. I just want, I wanted to go beyond where I had ever been. So I got myself in shape by the end of 2002, and I started to experience some of his world. Two years later, I start my business up, 2004. The next year, I do my first bodybuilding competition. That's in 2005. Come on, boy. Hold on, let me get this. He don't hear beating on the door like a like a Gestapo. Um, so I did my first show that year and got got blown out. Um, but it sparked my business because by me understanding what it took to do a, a competition. I was able to, it expanded my knowledge in nutrition and how to really maneuver and manipulate the human body. And my business took off. Opened my first gym in 2006. Well, let's fast forward. We get to 2010, and my head is uh, bigger than Yaku. You know, I'm making six figures. People calling me stuff like, oh, man, they, they used to call me, oh, you're the scientist. Oh, you're the magician. Oh, you're the doctor. All these, you know, you know how people gas you up, and I'm eating my own cheese. You know, I'm believing it. So uh, 2011 comes, and I start tasting failure. I'm not going to go all into detail, but I can tell you I lost everything. Everything. <laughs> and in that, that forced me to go back into where I began as a child. You know, my father really got me started with uh, Afrocentric knowledge. And then after he transitioned, I, went to, I found that after getting all his books, my daddy was actually reading metaphysical books. Sexuality and Spirituality by John Moore. Came out in 1980. Now, what black man reading this back in the late 70s and the 80s, a book on spirituality? I mean, on uh, on the metaphysics of sex. But either way, when I failed miserably, when I say fail, I mean fail bad, it thrust me into my hero's journey. So I came to Texas under very mundane pretenses, not knowing that it was all part of a divine mission for me to get on my hero's journey. And it was not until I was here like 10 years that I was starting to get on to the actual path that I originally came here for to recover the spirit of destiny. Now, y'all stay with me because I'm, I'm building up. Now, what happened after I got on my journey was that I noticed whereas in the past it had been, at times it felt like I was the Midas man. Everything I touched turned to gold. 
Well, after all that happened, it has been very difficult for me to make money in fitness. Now, I ain't lost my touch. I'm still, you know, I'm a master of my craft. I'm not saying I have to be egotistical, but I have mastered my craft, and I'm still learning. But it's not the same. And I remember Bobby Hemmett several times says, you'll notice it. The more conscious you become, the harder it becomes to make it in your mundane life. Things you used to do that work, they don't work no more. And that brings us up to present time. And I'm just being open with y'all because this is cathartic to me. We're coming to the end of 2016, and I don't care how much you think you know, you got to always go back and reevaluate yourself, always. And this is what I have determined. My knowledge has created a barrier because, like the Gnostic scriptures say, when your eyes are open, you will be troubled. Like I talked about earlier, you'll experience anger, hatred, malice, and that is good initially because that anger will fuel you to study more. You know, a little bit of hatred ain't bad because that hatred is saying that you have become aware of just how savage the beast is. But I'm too far along my path to still be engulfed in that, and I have been guilty of being engulfed by anger, hatred, and malice, specifically towards European people and other races, depending on how they treat me, but especially for the European, because I sit back daily and I see how he and she operate. But what I have to come at the success of myself is that I have created a barrier by getting stuck. What Bobby Hemmings say, didn't he always say don't get stuck? And I, although I have been outside the box in my thinking from the general masses, I still ended up putting myself in a box. That's serious business. It's real talk put myself into another box. To a degree, at times I have lost my innocence because of my experiences. And the only way to truly realize God hit is you have to what? Come as a child. You have to go back to your innocence. And I have created a vortex of resistance because of desperation, anxiety, need. And see, that desperation, that need for money creates a resistance where you block it because you're always thinking about it because you always need it. Stay with me, y'all. I'm getting there. I know this might not seem like it's all on topic. We're going to the metaphysics of fitness. I'm going to show you this thing, show you how I'm going to go back to what I know, what I know now and what I didn't know then, okay? Again, when I came here, let's say I was all on the physical path. And then when I had my failures, I swung all the way the pendulum all the way over to the spiritual path. Therefore, I allowed myself to to not maintain the physical shape that I had been accustomed to for the past eight, nine years. So what am I doing? Right here at this solstice, I'm looking at Jamal, and I'm like, Jamal, come back to the middle path. Don't it say in Romans 2 and 12, be in the world but not of the world? So I know we got to live in both worlds. 
But if anybody is capable of straddling two worlds, it's us. Because ultimately, if you take two circles, take one circle, say that's one universe or one reality, you take another circle and you, and you overlap it, what do you create? A vesica Pisces, the womb. And us being the womb people that come from the womb man, if anybody is capable of living in two worlds or multiple worlds at one time, it is us. And if we want to talk about melanin, it is a conduit that allows us to traverse multiple realities, multiple worlds all at one time. It's the key to the doorway, and you've got to come back to it. So now what am I going to do? Now, now what I'm suggesting to you, even if you don't know nothing about no fitness, I'm going to give you a crash course this evening. And not just fitness, but I'm going to show you how to take fitness and use it as magic based on what I know I have done with myself ignorantly. Now I'm going to take what I know in the mundane and apply it to my spiritual knowledge to it, and I'm going to create a new reality for myself. So check this out. I had an epiphany one day. I said, you know what? I've never really liked training legs. I train them, but I don't enjoy doing it. Some people love to go and do squats and all that. And I thought to myself, I said, you know, I've had these back injuries, you know, and it kind of stopped me from doing squats. And I told myself the other day, I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start back squatting. I want to tell my body, I want to tell my spine, you're going to hold in position. You're not going to twist. Tell my, my, my abdominal wall, you're going to lock down on my spine and my erectus. You're going to lock down on my spine. You're going to hold it stable, and I'm going to squat. But check this out, though. Using my God mind, this is what I said. By training my legs harder, I'm going to get greater understanding. Now, just think about what I just said. The word understanding means what? To stand under. What stands under a table? The legs. What stands under your furniture? The legs. What stands under your car? Your tires, your shocks. That would be the legs of your car. Your legs are your foundation. So, I use my leg training as a ritual. I say when I go and train my legs, I'm going to get more understanding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce these different principles with different body parts. I'm going to give you a scripture to back it up. Okay? So check this out. Genesis 19.24. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Now, we've taught in the church growing up that Lot's wife, they didn't even have enough respect to give her a name. She just always been identified as Lot's wife. Oh, she was the nemesis of the story. She was the idiot, the goat, because she turned around. No, she was the heroine of the story. She looked back so that she would have understanding. And because she looked back, she turned into what? A pillar of salt. Now, in the ancient world, salt was highly regarded. The word salary, how you get paid from your job, comes from salt because you could be paid in salt in ancient times. So by her becoming a pillar of salt, she became the legs that allowed Lot and the rest of his family to walk up to the high ground, to the mountain. She was the heroine. So by training my legs, I'm thinking, okay, I'm getting understanding. And that's going to help give me, give me more spiritual clarity. Okay. By training my back and my shoulders harder, 
it symbolizes my stability and my ability to carry a load. Because what does your spine do? Your spine carries the load of your whole torso. But your spine is aided by the muscles in the back called the erectors, which are the twin pillars. Do I need to say any more? Twin pillars. And your spine is in the middle. That goes your Kabbalah. The middle path is the spine. And then in the front, it's supported by your abdominal wall. And all those muscles surrounding it together combine or uh, uh, they form what's called the core. Your shoulders carry loads. That's why a lot of times when people are stressed out, they have a lot of tension in their shoulders because your shoulders reflect the load that you're carrying mentally and spiritually. So I say when I strengthen my back and my shoulders, I'm, I'm, I'm telling my, my, my body and my soul, my spirit, that I have the ability to carry my load. So let's go to Matthew 16 and 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God. Now we were all see we were taught that, that again that he was admonishing Peter. No, he said, Get behind me. If you look up the word sin in uh, uh, strong and Cordis, it means back and it means the west. He's telling Peter to get his back, to bow up. I got the front because Christ is in the east. That's why Christ is shown with his heart exposed. The east is the front where the heart is. The back is the west. Who is buried in the west? Osiris is buried in the west, which is a mentor. But because he is buried there, because of the spine, Christ can then be realized. If there's no spine, there is no Christ. If there is no Peter, Christ ain't got no back. Christ cannot be realized. So when I say I'm training my back, I am setting up the ladder, Jacob's ladder, so that I can climb it up to my Christhood. It's a kundalini experience. Now, for the shoulders, and this is the... Very next verse, 24, Matthew 16 and 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. I want you to take your hands and stretch your arms out to the sides, both hands, both arms, I'm sorry. What do you have? A cross. Your shoulders carry the cross. They carry the load. So when I train my shoulders, I'm telling myself I have the ability to carry my cross because we know my ultimate goal. Our ultimate goal is to become Christ, not to worship no Christ, but to become Christ. This ain't no Christian study group. We're talking about becoming Christ, becoming God, realizing our true origin, utilizing some mundane activities to help us stay on the course. Because sometimes we're led to believe that this path is, oh, I I won't have nothing to do with no Christmas. I won't have nothing to do with no fitness. And I'm spiritual. No, that's bullshit. Mm -mm. Got my girls with me. Guard my tongue. But um, no, everything is everything. And if you are a god and a goddess, you have to be creative and learn how to take everything. Is The world is your oyster. The whole cosmos is your oyster. Okay, next one. When I train my chest harder, and perform cardiovascular training. Cardiovascular is when you're doing things uh, that is non, non-weight-bearing. It's, it's, uh, 
it's aerobic exercise. When you lift weights, it's called anaerobic. It's supposed to be without, without the massive use of oxygen. Aerobic is you're relying on oxygen, okay? So cardiovascular is aerobic exercise. When I'm doing that, I'm thinking I'm expanding my horizon and I'm developing and cultivating my heart chakra. Because the chest runs, the, the, the fibers in your chest run horizontal. So when I say expand, when you develop your chest, your chest looks like it expands because that's the way the fibers run. And by expanding, I'm expanding the area that my heart chakra can grow. See, it's all about being creative. You are the gods. You can create any scenario you want, any ritual you want. It's all about the depth of your creativity. So, John 20 and 15, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She's supposed him to be a Gardener saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him. Hang a hat at the word gardener. This is Mary Magdalene is weeping over Jesus, and she sees him and she thinks he's a gardener. Why do they put that in there? What color, two colors we, we typically think of Osiris, black and green. You also got blue. Let's just hold a hat up, put a hat on. Black and green. What does that symbolize? Black is the bile. When you talk about the opening of the way, you're talking about the anus. For the bile, the black bile. But what does the black bile do? It fertilizes the ground so that new vegetation can grow. Thus, he's a green god. But what is green, though, also symbolize? The heart chakra. So when Mary Magdalene in John 20 and 15 sees the gardener, what's the first color that comes to your mind when you think of a garden? What's the predominant color? Green. That's, a, that's, that's, that's codex. That's coded language. They're talking about she saw his heart chakra illuminated. And it is through the heart chakra that then the pineal can be activated. So when you're doing your chest training, you're doing your cardiovascular, and you want to quit, you hate doing cardio like I hate doing it. I hate it with a passion. You need something deeper sometimes to give you something to push through. Think about, oh, man, I'm going to push these next five minutes, and I'm expanding my heart chakra. Just by you being conscious of yourself, you are working magic. Okay. Training your biceps is equivalent to holding on to success because your biceps squeeze. They squeeze your radius up to your humerus, your forearm up to your upper arm. That's what the bicep does. It squeezes. When you're doing your bicep work, think about I'm holding on, I'm squeezing on to success. Let's reference Genesis 22 and 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the steed of his son. And you might be thinking, what the hell does that have to do with a bicep? I want you to be creative. Use your creative mind. Let me first give you a little word origin on the word bicep. When you hear sep, sep is the same as sep as in cephalic, that's a head. Sep means head. Bi means two. So your bicep has two heads that comprise that muscle, two heads, okay? Now, the bicep would be, or the two heads would be equivalent to the two hemispheres of the brain, okay? So when Abraham catches or discovers there's a ram. Ram is Ra. Ra. You find that Ra in a lot of names in the Bible. Sarah, Ra. Abra. And the ram, Ra. 
Well, your brain has the cerebellum, cerebellum, cera. And that ram has two horns, also representing the cerebellum, the two hemispheres, joined by one. Also represents the fallopian tubes, fertility. So you're thinking when I do these biceps and I'm working these two heads, I am catching or I'm discovering a ram in the bush. On the mundane, you can equate that with success. On the spiritual, you can equate that with higher enlightenment. And you're squeezing that bicep because when you discover success and it falls in your lap, don't let it run through your fingers. Don't let it go. Hold on to it. When you train your triceps, think about pushing away negativity. Your triceps are on the back of your arms. Maybe for some of y'all who don't work out, I should explain. Your bicep is on the front. Your tricep is on the back. Tri means three. Sep means head, so that's three heads. Three heads. Now, you know that three is all over the Bible, but we're just going to use this, Daniel 3 and 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times, that's your seven chakras, more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Whenever you burn something, you're purifying it. So everything that should not be there, you're burning it away. That's what purifying is. Pure comes from the word pyro, which means fire. You're burning it away. So when you're doing your triceps, the triceps function as they extend your arms. When you extend, you're pushing things away. When you use your biceps, you're pulling things to you. So when you're doing your triceps, think about, I'm getting rid of all this negative shit. I'm getting it away. I'm getting it out. All the toxics, toxins and all the negativity, I'm pushing it out. I'm burning it up. Finally, when I train my calves, I'm thinking about springing, back and having vivacious life energy because your calves, everybody should know where your calves are at, on the back of your legs. Your calves help propel you, give you spring. That's the key to, one of the keys to jumping is your calves have to be activated for you to jump. So look at Mark 10 and 34. And they shall mock him and shall scourge him and shall spit upon him and shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. You've been going through catching hell, beat down, beating yourself down. You are equivalent of going down into that grave, feeling depressed, feeling less than, and when you think of when you're training those calves, think of you springing up. Spring, as in when the sun crosses the vernal equinox. Spring, coming out of your grave. It is important that we learn little simple rituals to do to give us sanity and clarity. Because we are under attack, yes, by outside forces, but most importantly, we're under attack from our own selves. And that is, I've had a moment of clarity. Now, mind you, I ain't saying, (laughs) I ain't there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm not going to say I'm not going to get irritated by 
Europeans and how they act. You know, we go in the bookstore yesterday. I swear to God, it's just like everywhere you go. This I don't. They, 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 it's like they can. They they are literally, literally human vampires. They 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 always circle around. I think I don't know if they can see see your light or they can sense your light like a moth just got to go towards or, or uh, a, a June bull got to fly towards the light, but it never fails. And it's just irritating because they always think, I mean, they're like children. They don't know no better. They, all, they literally think that you are, feel privileged when they're around. They would never fathom that you're just like, man, I don't want to be around you. I don't want to talk to you. I am not, I don't feel privileged to be in your presence. And, I mean, most of them are really ignorant. They don't know no better. They really, they've been raised that. When you've been raised to think that you're superior, you think that people, those who you've been taught that you're superior to, that they really do value your presence. So I ain't there as well. It's like I'm just, you know, I can just, you know, oh, okay, he's learning. No, I ain't there yet. But I'm thankful for moments of clarity, though, because ultimately what we got to do is find out how to maintain our sanity. It's all about us. It's about us getting where we're supposed to go. And really, really, if you get down to quantum physics and holographic science, they don't even exist. They don't exist. And really part of what they're trying to do is convince you and I that they exist, that they are worthy of your attention. When in reality, there's only a few of us who are really alive down here who really exist. And we've created this training camp to put ourselves through to have to experience the depths of of sourness and, and, and ill repute as to cultivate ourselves into something greater. And you, you had to reflect uh, the, the, the lowest aspect of you so that you could examine it and that it could torment you all a part of a game. So what if part of the way of getting out of the labyrinth or the maze was just focusing more on what we can actually do and not just thinking that it's calling on Zara Banda or, or Crystal Negro or Oshun or Maybe it's not even just that. Maybe it's, it's, it's even simpler than that. Maybe it's just as simple as the everyday events that you participate in being truly aware of how they can be used for magic. You know, like when I eat this broccoli, I know it has all this powerful chlorophyll in it. I am going, you know, being aware, it's like I'm, I'm turning on my metabolism to, to, uh, to absorb all of this potassium and this kelp, to absorb it. I'm going to kill this vegetable. Because understanding, even when you see in the Bible that the Hebrew women ate their babies, they're not talking about cannibalism. They're talking about absorbing the energy. Because killing, eating, absorption, destruction are all the same. I'm going to absorb this energy. And it's really just all, actually, what is, it, what is it coming down to? Our minds, activating our minds. So with that said, Tomorrow begins the winter solstice. So what am I planning on doing? I'm going to fast tomorrow. Not 
to venerate some deity, but to lighten my vessel, to clear out some space so that I can have more spiritual clarity and I can have more precise vision. Because when I was ignorant, I didn't have as much weighing me down because I didn't know as much. Sometimes what you think you know can weigh you down along with the physicality of life. So I'm going to clean out my vessels physically with a spiritual awareness. And then for the next days of the solstice, you know, the other two days, I'll be honest, I'm just going to play it by ear. I'm going to see how it goes tomorrow. I might fast through the whole solstice. Or I might just, you know, eat some, some basically a, a, a raw vegan, either vegan or vegetarian for those next couple of days. And it's all about creating my own ritual. Because no matter if I'm going to be utilizing some other mechanism, like I'm going to call on some deity, a call on an ancestor, ultimately I need to have my vessel more suitable of a vehicle to transport and transform the energy that I'm going to call on. So if anybody was kind of wondering, well, you're aware that the solstice is coming up, what's something that maybe, hey, maybe you want to try fasting. And if you can get some time to etch out, try to sit and meditate. And check out Brother Blackwater's class on Friday at 730 uh, Eastern Standard, 630 Central Standard, when he talks about meditation. And moving your chi, moving your energy, and not letting ourselves be moved by life. Another thing, they just identified some new heart condition called SCAD, and it's uh, it is uh, spontaneous coronary artery dissection. Now, this is how they go back on their lives. They put up this whole industry about cholesterol starting in the 80s. Oh, cholesterol. The 90s was fat. How it leads to heart disease and this and that. Now they're coming back and saying, well, there's this new condition, and it doesn't really align with osteoporosis. This is what, and we don't quite know how it came about or what's causing it. Now, I know they're lying because I've got all these books where they've already been talking about it as far back as 1978. The book is called Time, Space, and Medicine, I think, by Larry Dawson. I think I talked about it last week. As far back as 1978, if not earlier, they were already identifying how stress is causing all these different hormones to emit shutting down the immune system, precursor to diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, all the above. And they created all these industries based on all these other false flags. When in reality, what's really killing people is Western civilization. Your job, your pursuit of progress, your pursuit of achievement, killing yourself to go back to get your master's so you're thinking that's going to get you higher in your job or, you know, or or getting your Ph.D. so they can put you in more debt and dangling the possibility of you getting more money. All the while, you're killing yourself, hair falling out, arthritis, stress, digestion issues, metabolic dysfunction. All these things come from stress, Western civilization, if we should use such a word. There's not much civilized about it. So you got to have the ability to self-monitor and step away from some of this stuff. 
I know some of us are in positions where we got to go back to school just to maintain these jobs because they put you under pressure. It's all about certification, certification. Oh, you've been doing this for 20 years, but now you need to be recertified because, well, things have changed. We need you to go and show and prove. So it's important to incorporate some type of fitness in your life to have some means of decompressing. And what we're coming to learn is that your physicality does have an effect on your spiritual life as well. How can you get the spiritual nourishment if your body is full of toxins? So it's good to move. It's good to move. What's something else going on? Uh, Y'all heard about the Berlin attacks. We know that's a winter solstice uh, ritual. You know, if it even occurred, we don't know. See, this is what, this is an example of low magic. Like Dr. Eileen said, this is low magic. This is what people have to do when they don't have what you have. They got to do things like this to compensate. And it's not by happenstance that it occurs right here before the winter solstice. So, I personally am going to take this opportunity, this energy that is available, and I'm going to use it to work on me. I know I'm God, and I know I'm going to take time and work on God's temple, Solomon's temple, and all the parts that are all encompassed. I'm calling on you all to, to some degree, do the same. Take your magic and focus on you, on building yourself up. Because they have working nails. Let's focus on working ours. Because we got the Holy Grail. There's a whole nother part to this whole fitness thing. I think it would be best if we do a part two because it's too much to try to go into the night. But I wanted to, we'll say that this is the foundation. What to walk away from with this little discussion tonight is what I would hope you walk away from is this, that you just really start, if you're not now, be as creative as you can. Don't get locked into any box as far as thinking of, oh, I got to think this way or I got to move this way, you know. And this is what it means to be spiritual. This is what it means to be magical because in that you'll still end up putting yourself in a box. John Henry Clark used to say we are world-class people. Let's go a little step further. We are cosmic people. So that means you can take anything, and who better is it at taking something and making making nothing, taking something and making taking nothing and making something out of it? Who better at it than taking lemons and turning them into lemonade? You have the ability to take anything. If you're an artist, when you're sitting down and sketching, you can be saying, "I'm sketching my new reality. I'm going to sketch New Jerusalem." If you're making music, Gino, Chris New, you know, you have the power of the muse. The muse. Even if you're a comedian, whatever you do, purpose, engineer, I'm building Solomon's temple. I'm designing Solomon's temple. 
whatever your barber. I am, because we know in metaphysics and occult science the, the significance of hair, Harry Krishna. So I am the god of hair. I am hair as in Heru. Hair is also the whore, the divine whore. All those words come, all come back to the same stem. I'm telling you, everything you do is God business. Don't think that your life is insignificant or the little little profession you're involved in or your whatever you're doing is insignificant. Everything is magic. So that's all I got. The lines are open, 626-414-3535. You're listening to Tips and Tricks Tuesday on First World Order Radio. This is Brother Jamal sitting in for Blackwater, the Men and Magician. Press uh-huh. one if you got a question or if you got a quick comment before we get out of here and we'll 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 holler. See what's on y'all's mind this evening. Unless y'all gonna be shy. Or oh, I bored y'all to death. Peace. We got the purpleless in the building. Peace. Hey, Sam. How is everyone? Um, I just called in for a comment. Cool. I just called in for a comment to let everyone know that Intersanctum is going to start meeting. Our first meeting is tentatively going to be January 6th. Right, right. I'm sorry. I forgot. That's right. The inner sanctum down here in the Lone Star State on the north side. I say. The Dallas Fort Worth area. We're going to start meeting on the uh, first weekend, I think that is, January. And what's so significant about that is that in ancient Kemet, they had a 12 day festival beginning with the, uh, at the end of the solstice. 12 day Heru festival and it culminates on the 6th so this is a very powerful time we got the solstice that's where they get the 12 days of Christmas from on the 12th day of Christmas so we're going to harness that energy so uh, Fort Worth area you can uh now, my email is hjrobinson360 at gmail. Purpose, I don't know if you want to give out yours. E-L-O-R-I-A-W-E-B-B at msn.com. And that's the main email you need to contact to, to, to stay abreast of what's going to be happening. So, and if you missed it, you know, this will be archived on uh, First World Order on Blog Talk, and it'll be on Dr. Eileen's YouTube page. So we're finding more and more people are in the woodworks down here who are into some high science. So y'all stay tuned for we get ready to get some things popping down here. I say. I say. So, y'all, um, if y'all awake out there, y'all, um, let me know what's what's on your mind this evening. All right, we got us a Houstonian coming aboard. Nine three three one. What's happening? What's up with it, Jamal? What's going on, man? Gino. What's happening? You got it. Oh, nothing much, brother. Nothing, nothing much, brother. Uh, really enjoyed the show as always, man. Uh, uh, I like okay. the the uh, topic was that you were talking about fitness. Uh, anyone that knows me knows that I pretty much work out every day. And uh, and you're, like you were talk, talking about with cardio, cardiovascular. I do a lot of cardio. And uh, I got two things for you, man. Number one, 
when you're talking about cardio, it's interesting. What's your take when when they say mind over matter? Uh or the whole thing is uh to, you know, you know, your body's hurting and so you have to trick the mind to overcome that. What's your whole take on that? Well that that when you're understanding the supremacy of the mind in the grand scheme of things. That that uh, pain is just the sign that you are going into or you're crossing the threshold going into a new reality. And that your mind has the power to override that because it has the ability to see the big picture. Your 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 physical body is more of a, a slave of sorts, and the mind is the grand master. Okay. So, okay. you know. Okay. Okay. All right, and then my next thing, man, is more of a, a statement, or I guess a comment. Well, I just said statement. Um, I um, I decided to do a fast not too long ago. And it was supposed to be for seven mm-hmm. days. And so I went to uh, our local health food store here. And, uh, well, anyway, uh, the fast that I did, they uh, they give you uh, these these pills, you know, help kind of clean out your colon, kidney, liver, and spleen. Because that's mm-hmm. the where a lot of, you know, most sickness resides. So. And uh, mm-hmm. it's on the body. And so, and though, so anyway, so... Um, the other thing they give to, to purify the body, like you were saying about the word purify, they give us olive oil. Mm-hmm. Now, going back to what you were saying earlier about the color black and green, mm-hmm. that's essentially what olive oil is. Mm-hmm. Is that whole mm-hmm. black and green? You that's know what right. I'm saying? So, this is what helps with the purifying or to try to get the sickness mm-hmm. up out of you. So, like you said, mm-hmm. everything is everything, you know. Right. So everything is everything. So that's, that's basically what's out. You know? That's right. So That's right. Yep. So, Francis, shout out to Talking about intelligence. <laughs> I wanted to say that as well. I wanted to give a shout out to Francis, Sister Trina, my boy Chris New. Everybody out here listening, man, to this brother here laying it down, putting it down. Uh, Jamal, we really appreciate you, man. Like, man, just keep up the great really? work, brother. Really? No doubt. I, mm-hmm. I appreciate y'all, and I, I appreciate the, you know, I give Sister Purpose, I give her the name, of, her new name is the World Wide Web, because, you know, she's the, <laughs> she's the connecting, connecting piece, so oh, I'm yeah. glad that she introduced oh, yeah, all of us and, you know, uh, mm-hmm. everything is definitely everything, you know. It is, brother. So, Take it easy, Jamal. No doubt. Peace. All right, peace, man. Okay. 0324, what's happening? Hey, brother Jamal, how are you? Peace, peace. How you doing? Kansas City. I'm happy. You What's know going what? on, Goddess Trina? Man, I let you get away last week, and I never figured out how to contact you or reach you on Facebook or anything. I need to connect with you, brother. Okay. Who, well, what, what's your uh, name well on, what, one, what is your name on Facebook? Well, I just now got back on there, and it's uh, <laughs> it's just my name, Jamal Robinson. Robinson, okay. I'll be in. Uh, and that's J A M A L. Uh huh. All right. And, uh, Trina hurt Michael. I'll, I'm gonna be uh, adding you on my page here uh, soon, brother. Okay. Right on. Um, right and on. also in reference to uh, uh, physical fitness and, and good health and everything, I just wanted to add in. I'm going. I'm going through a rough uh, uh, sickness right now, but. Uh, in spite of all that I'm going through and have been going through, uh, yoga 
has yoga yeah. and meditation has has really really helped me to maintain uh, or allow me to function at a very very high level to almost to the point where well Francis kind of caught on but but it's almost to the point where nobody even can tell that uh, hmm. there are things going on with me and, and yoga has just been really uh, a blessing wow. for me. My daughter got me onto it. Uh, before the sickness mm. got too heavy, so I just wanted to throw mm-hmm. that out there about yoga and how it keeps the body flexible and it exercises muscles intensely. <laughs> right. Yeah, and yoga ain't no joke. There's any aerobic exercise as well too. Mhm. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to yeah, throw that out there pose. and throw that one in. Yeah, I appreciate it because yeah, and that's true. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yoga, yoga punk me. <laughs> uh, it ain't no joke, especially as a big man. You know, people be putting their legs all behind their head and just, you know, down dog, up dog, <laughs> happy dog. You know, downward and, uh, dog. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's about the easiest one for me. You know. But um, they, and and those poses, yeah, I, I, every muscle in your body is forced to stretch, exercise, mm-hmm. and holding those poses really increases uh, mm-hmm. muscle and mm-hmm. uh, different mm-hmm. parts of your body. It's really incredible. It's been very good for me. But mm-hmm. but old Hawkeye Francis, you know Francis is pretty sharp. You can't put nothing over on her. <laughs> mm-hmm. She knew. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. She knew something was going on. She knew something was going on, so I just uh, finally had to admit it to her, and then I was able to talk about it, but uh, the yoga is what keeps me going. Well, let me give everybody another little easy, well, it ain't easy, but it's simple. Something, once again, everything is everything. You go back to your childhood, jumping rope. And I'm going to tell you why jumping rope. And even if you got to build your way up, if you, see, there's different levels. If you if you can't jump rope, yeah, you can just bounce and pretend you jump rope like they did air rope. And as you build up your your you know your strength and your endurance, you can go to the actual rope. But the, the good thing about jumping is that your lymphatic system works like a valve. Now, what does your lymph system do? It, it removes toxins. You know, uh, mm-hmm. so when you're jumping, when you're jumping, you activate your lymph system, and it only moves in one direction. It moves north, so it goes up. So when you're jumping, you're pushing toxins up, 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 and then they go out mm-hmm. through your lymph nodes. Right. So a very therapeutic regimen to take on for physical fitness and to help with any type of illness is jumping, you know, hmm. even if it's a trampoline. Hmm, I'm gonna keep, I think so. I will buy a small trampoline. Yeah, why not? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of different little things that are available now just to, just you know, it's pretty much it just it's, it's just come down to the depth of your creativity so a, a, a lot of this stuff, and there are a lot of mechanisms: the yoga, uh, the resistance training, uh, your typical cardiovascular, your jumping. The prime thing, the common denominator of all this stuff is move. Mm-hmm. Move. Moving. And stag- mm-hmm. stagnation, you know, water that does not move is dead. It's normally where a lot of dead things are living. And and water that mm-hmm. is moving is where you're going to find life. That's right. Hmm. So, yeah. Well, it's like tomorrow I'm going to... I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to get on this fast tomorrow. And I just, I want more power. I want more power to control my reality. 
and um, so I'm 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 have noticed too that a lot of times the past few years, as one year has closed out, I've just moved right into another year, and there was no break, there was no time of reflection, hmm. there was no time to cultivate anything. It was just a continuation of the same. So I, I'm, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take time before this year ends and the next one starts to do some some tinkering on myself. Hmm. And, I, you know, I'm encouraging everybody to do that. Don't just run over into the next one, you know, and you ain't take it because that's 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 a rich that's a magic too. We, we're calling mm-hmm. these cycles, and they just move you right from Christmas to after Christmas sale. Oh, to, oh, get ready for New Year's, and next thing you know, you're right back on the on the hamster wheel. Hamster wheel. So at some point, yeah, at some point we got to uh, objectify ourselves and step back from the matrix and just observe it. You know, and observe ourselves and then get back on it. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my that's how I'm looking at this you know, this this thing, um, this year ending up. Because, you know, this year is two one six. That's the nine, that's the wound. Hmm. So this is a year of, of the final uh trimester of gestation. Mm-hmm. And mm. uh next year adds up to a ten. Ten means one, that means whole. So we're supposed we're going through a birthing pains right now. We're going through, you know, contractions because we're getting ready to give birth to something whole. Regardless of what they're saying in the media, regardless of all the different distractions and scare tactics and what these idiots are doing with all these different debates and and, and, and all this other stuff. Something whole is getting ready to be born. I know it. Especially for me personally, you know, I'm looking at just all of the different pitfalls and travails that, 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 you know, we've been dealing with personally. And I know I'm going through like another stage of initiation because, you know, I turned 40 here in a couple of months. And 40, you know, and this was one thing Dr. Eileen, I remember him saying this at the lecture in Dallas. He said, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights in Genesis, the Noah story. And I never paid attention to this. He said on the 40th day, the rain, the water broke. And see, because my mind was conditioned to think about, oh, the flood stopped. I didn't catch what it was really saying. The water broke. Yeah, 36 is when it's safe to give birth, but typically, you know, it's going to go to the 40th week. And then the water broke, the 40th week. So something is, 2017 is going to be a very powerful year of revelation and it's going to be the body of Osiris coming back together. Ashe, Ashe. 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 So whatever, whatever we're going through, don't, don't, uh, don't feel like all is lost because it ain't. It's just, it's just time to push. You know, that's the hardest part of this. Now is time. We see the head. It's time to push. Huh? Mm. Mm. So, with that said, y'all, I'm going to shut it down and go and spend some time with the fam. And once again, it's always a privilege and an honor to be able to have uh, conversations of this depth especially in these times that we're living in. 
Where the, where the wise of us are seen as fools. Huh? And the damn fools are seen as the wise of us. I did. Mm-hmm. I did it already. So, uh, like we said, stay, stay tuned. January 6th, we're going to be looking to get some things kicked off around here in the DFW on some occult metaphysical tip. And uh, we're just going to ride the mothership the way it takes us. Ashe. And Ashe. Uh, and uh, as always, you know, let's stay down till we get up. And when we get up, stay down. Okay. With that said, that's wanna... right. Ashe. Thank you all again for listening to another week of Tips and Tricks Tuesday. On First World Order Radio, Brother Jamal signing off. Awesome. Thanks, Brother Jamal. Thank you, Brother Thank you. Jamal. Thank you. Peace. 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 H.J. Robinson. I've been from the mountaintop to the valley lows. But through it all, I've managed to maintain my soul. Encapsulated in every raindrop that falls on my rooftop is a goal or a dream shot. By situations, circumstances, there ain't always second chances. You say you hold and show me what you got. And I can't cope with these shattered hopes. And yes, my back's against the ropes. I'm blowing steam from my kettle pot. Lend me your ears inside these tears. It's the pain associated with a man that's trying to find his spot. When you look in the eyes of your children, realize you can't supply the items of their desires. So when your pride drops and the book stops here to these fears, I adhere until some income is near. I guess the picture won't be clear. So I keep plugging like a mule still trudging on the rope. I'm tugging, try. It's not a relevant word. Your visions get blurred. I'm lost with no shirt. I wonder why. And I don't know. No, no, no.